many of you know God called you? God, they, 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 there's not a person he saves that he doesn't call. And the callings is different from one another because he knows his creation. You are an individual creation with an individual purpose, an individual plan. Somebody say, you might be the light bulb in the house. You might be the switch, but you're still in the house. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. When God designed the house, you was in it. Amen. amen. Find your place. Amen. Know your calling. Amen. Come on, there are different, different members in the body, but one body. Yes. Hallelujah. Different gifts and different callings, different abilities, according to the gifts and the talents that he's given you. Some of you God created for one purpose with one talent. Don't bury it. Some five talents. Some three talents. Amen. Amen. If you've got one, don't try to be the one with the five. Stay with the one with you have and develop that and let that be the best. You be the best at what you can do ordained of God. Amen. Too much because too much is given. Much is required. And if you don't have that ability for the five or the three or whatever, you know, you, 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 you keep touching many bases but not fulfilling your purpose and your death. How many of you met people like that? They're dabbling here and there and running here, running there, running there, and everything, everything is turning loose, you know, instead of finding the purpose and cultivating that, developing that, be good at that. And let God anoint that and use that for his kingdom, for his glory. Because it's not, it's not how much you've done. Say with me, it's well done. It's well done to the one talent. It's well done to the three talent. Well done to the five talent or the ten talent. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Brother Taylor is coming. How many enjoyed that word this morning? We have teaching quarter to ten to quarter eleven but the tailor will bless your heart but the tailor joy to have you god bless you god bless you bless i'm going to read the word for uh today we're going to be reading out of colossians the second chapter verses one to seven it says this for i would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Yes. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Yes. Have ye, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, yes. so walk oh. ye in him. Root it and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you for this precious day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. But God, we today, we want to take inventory of all that you have taught us up to this moment. And God, all that you have taught us, we want to take inventory and see if we are walking therein. God, we don't want to miss a step. We don't want to miss a lesson. We won't want to miss anything that you have showed us that we may demonstrate to this world what holiness looks like. God, teach us to walk in that which you have taught us today. God, as the word of God comes forward today, open up our minds. Let us be ready to change. Lord, let us listen to change, hearken to change, and be quick to change according to your word. God, as we leave this place later today, God, let us be ready to walk in the truth that we have heard on this day. Yes. And Father, we ask that you keep us pliable. Yes, keep us pliable yes. and humble. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
in the book of uh, John, 1 John 2 and 6, a short verse of scripture. I want to share with you a message today entitled, Walking as He Walked, to walk with Christ. Say that phrase with me, walking as He walked, to walk with Christ. What is the message? To walk with Christ, walking as he walked. The scripture said, he who says he abided in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Let me read that again. We're talking, we're going to lift up Jesus this morning. We're talking about what it means to walk with Christ, walking as he walked. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Father, bless the word today. Let the word go forth with wisdom, truth, power, rhema. God, touch the hearts of your people, the minds and the lives. Lord, give us receptive ears, receptive hearts, that we may receive the engrafted word of God, that we may grow thereby, that we may bring forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit, for the kingdom, to the glory of God. We give you thanks, we give you praise, in Jesus' name, the body of Christ said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. In this life on earth, Jesus was our perfect example the Bible said he left us an example that we should follow in his steps. His manner of life was simple, sincere, and godly. We should learn of him and walk in the same pattern, the same way he walked. The scripture said in 1 John 2, 4, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. In 1 John 3, 6, the scripture said, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Christ also suffered for us. Paul, I mean, I mean Peter, Peter declares to us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. In 1 Peter 2, 21, 22, uh, Peter said, Jesus who did not sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. He was sinless. He was spotless. He was righteous, godly, and holy. In 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then in, the, and then in uh, uh, 2 John 1, 6, and this is love that we walk after his commandments. And this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So we walk in the word of God. Throughout scripture we read how we ought to walk with Christ so that we can please God and be a blessing to others for his glory. Can two walk together except there be an agreement? So we have to come in line with his will, his way, his purpose, but with his commandments, with his word within our hearts. I believe we ought to walk in the reverent fear of God. Yes, we walk in the grace of God. Yes, we should be walking in the sanctifying power of God. We should be walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh yes, hallelujah, that, that we may abound more and more. Furthermore, that we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, as you have received us, how you ought to walk and how to please God so that you would abound more and more. You grow stronger and stronger. Somebody say praise God. The more you walk with God, the more you abound more and 
and more. How many of you love to walk with Christ? I enjoy walking with Jesus. I enjoy walking with the King. And He walks with me. And He talks with me. And He tells me I am His own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Oh, to walk with Him in the confirmation, in the unity, in the agape love, in the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost, in the fellowship of God. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. If Jesus declares to us, he said, if we do not walk as he walked, we cannot, we cannot be his disciples. Wow. Now the journey with Christ of you becoming a fully mature, a fully mature son, say with me, begins with what? Discipleship. What does discipleship say? Servanthood. Servanthood. you always a servant. Never get too big for your bridges that you quit being a servant. You are forever a servant. I'm a servant. Uh, I wear many hats. The first one I wear is a servant. Uh, I see trash in the parking lot. I get a trash can and I pick up the trash. I'm pastor, but I'll clean the parking lot. I see, I see the toilet stop up. If I'm nobody here, I will do all I can. Clean, do the plumber, do what I can to get the house in order. I, 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 I'm always a servant. I, I'm never too big. And God honors that Jesus was a servant. He said, you call me master and you call me Lord, so I am. If I be your master, Lord, wash your feet. How much more you want to wash one another's feet? It's not the clean feet. It's an expression of servanthood humbling your heart to one another for we are our brother's keeper somebody say praise the Lord I love you amen and we ought to love one another and the early church had a testimony oh how they love one another the agape love of God how beautiful is it for brethren to dwell together it is like the holy unction the holy did the bashanara of Messiah who I feel the Holy Ghost Somebody praise the Lord right now. Ah, oh, the Lord's in the house. Oh, my Lord, every time I try to preach English, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. How beautiful is it for brethren to dwell together. It's like the holy anointing of God that run down the head of Aaron. Down his head, down his face, down his beard, down his skirt. Oh, the flow, the flowing of the unction, the flowing of the oil, the flowing of the fire, the flowing of the glory, the flowing of the power. Oh, thank God for that relationship that you cultivate and develop as you walk with God, walking with the King of Kings, walking with the Lord of Lords in sweet harmony with joy unspeakable in righteousness, godliness in true holiness growing up into Christ into the full measure, into the full stature, into the fullness of God and of Christ. What a journey. Wow. <laughs> Woo, what a journey. Anybody feel what I'm feeling? Up here, yeah. you feel up here? Ah, oh, Lord, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm waving and the waters of my ways. Who shed a mama? Who let in the bottom of a son? In the bottom of a son? In the bottom of a son? In the bottom of a My Lord, who? Oh, 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 I feel it on my waist and I'm like waving in it. Feel his presence. And the glory of the Lord is here. Holy Spirit, come upon me, said. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Let me feel. Let me feel you. Let me feel you. Come upon me. Come upon me. Come upon me. Upon me. Upon me. If any man come to me. And Jesus says, and hate not his father and mother, 
and wife and children and brother and sister. Yea, even his own life. Also, he cannot be my disciples. What I was telling you earlier, in the journey of becoming, say with to then give he power to become what? A fully grown, mature, manifest son. That's where you want to be. Say, a mature son. Come on, hallelujah. We start on the journey. First, you give your life to Christ. Second, you come into the Holy Spirit will bring you into servanthood, discipleship. Now, many of the church not even into discipleship. That's the first level of you becoming, say, servanthood, discipleship. Second level, you never could be in a servant. You're growing, you're walking, you're becoming the journey. As you walk with Christ, you come into that relation. Now you come into a relationship with Christ. Say with me, a friendship. Friendship of intimacy. Where he opens his heart to you. And he reveals to you what the Father has revealed to him. He shares with you. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Oh, you know, when you open your heart to a servant, Oh, you open your heart. He opens his heart to you. Now, friendship, I no longer call you servant. Now I call you friend. Hallelujah. Anybody want to be a friend of God? You know, we want him to be our friend. How about you being his friend? Can God say to you, would you be my friend? Can I trust you? Can you walk with me? Can I have fellowship and companionship with you? I long for you. I I want to I wanna come sit with you and sup with you and fellowship with you. Oh, I, I want that in my life. Friendship. You never quit being a friend. You're forever serving, ever a friend. You're still growing. You're still maturing. You're still walking with Christ. And now you're coming into what? Sonship. Unto them gave he power to become. It's a becoming sons of God. The manifest fully mature. So Paul said the level that you have grown and the level that you have come into. He said walk in that same level. Talk to be here and amen. say amen. 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 Glory. Paul said, Leave the elementary. Move on from the elementary stage. Of salvation. The elementary stage of church. What? Yes, church. You know what church is? Me and you. There's more beyond you and me. Yes. And I'm glad there is. Yes. Paul said if you just focus on each other, you're going to end up turning on each other. Yes. Chewing up each other. Come on, talk to me here. We're not in it for each other. Yes. Even though we are a part of one another. We're the members. We're the body. But our focus, say with me, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about us. It's not about church. It's about him. Because God desired to bring church into kingdom. And from kingdom into priesthood. Hallelujah. I mean, how priesthood is what? That you minister spiritual sacrifices unto God. And the first sacrifice you give to God is yourself. Present yourself a living sacrifice. Holy. Say it. Holy and acceptable unto God. Which is my reasonable service. My reasonable worship with God. Amen. Amen. Glory. To walk with God. You can't walk with him and not grow. You can't walk with him and not come into full maturity. It's a journey of becoming. Hallelujah. You forever servant, ever, ever a friend. And you come into fully grown mature. And that's the journey of becoming. You grow. Heaven is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, I want to tell you, all eternity, all creation, read it. All creation is looking and yearning and longing for the manifestation of God's sons to reign throughout not just this world but throughout the universe throughout the cosmos what, what is 
Jesus saying when he says, you cannot be my disciples if you, if you don't hate your father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sister, yea, even your own life. Paul said, you that are married should live as if you're not married. Smile at me. You'll get that tomorrow. In other words, say with me, marriage is for the flesh, but you're a spiritual creation. Don't get so involved in the flesh that you forget who you are. Talk to me here. Anybody just got that? That you forgot who you are. I'm a spiritual creation. I'm a spirit. I have an eternal soul. And one day either I'm going to reign with him, I'm going to stay put. One day I'm going to come into the kingdom and one day I'm going to be left behind. One day I'm either going to go home to be with him or I'm going to be left behind. Amen. What Jesus is saying here, let me answer that. What he's saying, you must love them far less than you love me. I checked you, you don't love them. I love my wife. But I love him far greater than I love her. She does not dictate my life. Because I love him, I can love her. You'll get that tomorrow. Without him, I can't really love her. And, 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 and she has to come to that understanding that, that I love her, but I love him far more. He is my life. She is for the flesh to be a helpmate to me. But even if she isn't, you should love God far more and not depend on that. If you have a wife that loves God, that's just cream on the top. So I'm smiling. Everybody doesn't have that relationship. Talk to me. And then God wants you to be men of God. Say men of God. The world trying to strip you of your masculinity and your manhood. That's the last days that that's all over. But God made you male. God made you a man. And he, he gave women for you. And you and you for women. You become one if you're married. Somebody say amen. 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 But he's saying you shall love him. For whosoever doth not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciples. The cross is living a God life in a perverse and crooked and sinful generation. Well, tell me we're not living in a crooked, perverse, and sinful degradation uh, generation. It, it, it is evolving and it will, you think it's bad? Buckle up. It will get worse. Evil men's hearts will wax worse and worse. But we must bear our cross. Never compromising. Whoever, whoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath. You often hear pastors says, hold on to nothing in this earthly life. You came with nothing. You will leave with nothing. Everything God, everything you have in your life, God gave to you. And so when he gave it to you, uh, give it back to him and put it in his hands and say, Lord, I give it back to you for only you can keep it. Only you can preserve it. Somebody say amen. I don't hold on to it. My life does not depend on this. This is not, I, this is not what I live for. This does not consume me. I realize that I'm on a journey and I'm just passing through. We're in the world, but not of the world. I have a walk and that walk is with my God. That walk is with Christ. 
How did Jesus walk? And where did the principles upon which he acted? The first principles was that was his aim in life. He tells himself, I do all things that please him. His beginning of the journey. I do all the, I do all things that please him. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it all to the glory of God. Live a life that pleases him. Enoch walked with God and he had a testimony that he pleased God. How many of you told God, God, I want to please you. Help me to please you. Whatever it takes. Uh, Lord, it's in my heart. I make a declaration to you. I purpose in my heart to please you by the grace of God. Declare it. God said, declare a thing. Make a declaration. Say to me, that's my aim. And I trust God to get there. Come on, come on. Holla. That's my aim. Anybody ever set goals? I want to please God. My aim is to please God. Hallelujah. 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 He tells himself, I do all those things that pleases him. John 8, 29. The will of a father was the aim of the whole of his life. Hallelujah. From boyhood to his death. Wish not I was about my father's business. Young men, forget not the days of your youth. As a young person, I've been serving the Lord since I was 10 years old. I'm 71. Still serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't use my past as a journey. I want to tell you, God's bigger than that. Somebody say praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he agonized in drinking the bitter cup, he said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But that was the flesh. The flesh never want to face crucifixion, death, and dying. But then the spirit kicks in. Nevertheless, not my will. Come on. The spirit must always override the flesh. The flesh must always be governed by the spirit, but not, not the opposite. For they that are led by my spirit. You are born to the spirit. If any man have not the spirit of Christ. The spirit must be in control of your life. Not the flesh. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. Pursue the spiritual. Come into it because you are a spiritual creation. The body. What about the body? It's only the house that you live in. See this is not me. Or it's quiet. See, this is not me. Say, take a good look at me. This is not me. Well, where are you? I'm speaking to you. I'm talking to you. Somebody say amen. Get to know the person within the house. Wow. Don't get fooled with the house. Well, that's a mouthful. Don't get deceived with the house. I marry a pretty house. No, you marry a demon out of hell. That can put hell in your life the rest of your life. Talk to me here. I'm telling you the God's truth and you know it. Look beyond the house. And look who's talking. Through the door of the house, the mouth. Amen. We'll get to know the person inside the house. I live in a house. That's not me. That's where the body lives. The spirit lives in this. That's not me. That's where I live. Where do you live? Come on, that's not me. This is not me either. Because one day I'm going to slip out of the house. And they're going to lock it up. Glue down the mouth, glue down the eye, fill it up with bombing fluid, put it in a box and say goodbye. Amen. 
Otherwise, it'll stink and rot like an old deer. And the stench will kill you. That's corruption. I'm gone. Say, I'm gone. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodbye, world. Goodbye. Hallelujah. Now aren't you glad you're saved? Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus says to us, not my will, but thine be done. This is the way to walk as he walked. Not my will, but thine be done. Always confirm, Lord, your will. Your will. Your will. Your will. Your will. Never just pray what you want. You pray what you want, but then you close it out always. Father, but not my will. Because what I want, you might not want from me. Your will be done. Your name be praised in my life. I don't want, I don't want your permissive will. Because I'm still hounding you and tormenting you. How many of you know a child, when a child come for you, come to you for something and say, Daddy, I want this, or Mama, I want this, and they keep hounding you and hounding you and how, and you get disgusted and fell. You say, all right, have it. So you give it, but you give it with no joy. You give it with no, you give it because of the hounding. That's your permissive will. That's not your will. You give it because you don't want to hear the hounding. You, you, they, they wore you out. But you have no pleasure in it. You have no joy in it. That's like Let's go to God. And God says, no. Oh, but God, oh, but God, oh, but God, but God, but God. And God says, no. Oh, and you keep, you keep hounding and hounding. And God says, all right, all right. The Bible said, he, let me tell you what the word says. When, it's in, when it is in God's perfect will, the Bible said, when he blesses, he addeth no sorrow to it. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. He addeth no sorrow. But when he when he yield to your to, when he yield to your hounding in his permissive will, guess what? You're gonna, you're gonna catch it. You might get it, but guess what? It's gonna bite you in the rear. It's going to hurt you. You're going to reap sorrow and pain because that was not God's will for you. Oh, Holy Father, may we walk with God in His divine will that we may please Him as we serve Him, as we walk with our God. His principle of life is that He lived and walked by faith. Everything of the spiritual must be of faith. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. He that cometh to God must come believing that he is. Hallelujah. And we are, and as we live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Jesus said, you're going to eat of me. You should live by me. Hear what he says. People take communion just because it's bread and juice. No, 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 no. Oh, you're taking a double-edged sword. Once one end of the sword is death. The Bible said you died prematurely before your years because you took it unworthily. Because to you, to you it's just food. It was just juice and bread. It was not the sacrifice, the price he paid for your life and your redemption. Hear what Jesus said, John 5, 57. And if you live by the Father, so he that eateth me, Jesus said, he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. In other words, you should have no life outside of Christ. That's the word. In 1 Corinthians 10.31 Whether therefore Hear what Paul says 
whether therefore you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Somebody say amen. The walking in independence and obedience. Jesus could of himself do nothing. His words, his work was from the Father as he was instructed, so he acted. Christ said to his followers, without me, you can do nothing, John 15, 5. Nothing truer has ever been spoken. How miserable we would be without his help and his divine grace. His power in life, it was by the Holy Spirit anointed. So not only we walk in faith, but we walk in his anointed. We walk in the power of his spirit. I hate to think why I would be without the Holy Spirit. I think what I hate to think why I would be without the power of God in my life. The Bible said you are kept by the power of God. God keeps us. God sustains you. He anoints you. He empowers you. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses, witnesses as you go through life. Witnesses. Nothing truer has ever been spoken. How miserable we would be without the power of his anointing. It was by the Holy Spirit how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with power under the Holy Ghost who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And he returned from the wilderness in the power of the Spirit of God. His ministry, his call, his walk, his life, his words. Never man spake like this man. For with authority he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. I want to tell you, under the anointing, the power in his word, the power in his wall, the power in his word, the power in his ministry the power in his life he was filled and consumed and possessed with the power of the Holy Ghost for the spirit of the Lord is upon me for the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he hath sent me to heal the broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourned inside to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the debashanda labokon rapatoko for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness by the planning of the Lord that he might be glorified hallelujah somebody praise him somebody praise him somebody praise him somebody praise him him. Tempted 40 days 
and 40 nights by the enemy overcoming the enemy through the word of prophecy the prophesy the prophetic word and the Bible said he returned from the wilderness in the power of the spirit hallelujah and then he went to the temple and there was delivered in the hymn the book of the prophet Isaiah he opened the book and he found the place where it was written and he confirmed the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for the Lord hath anointed me only the most oh what a confirmation a mighty man of God a man of God the man Christ Jesus hallelujah robed in the garb of human form and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth I tell you, I feel it up to my waist. Amen. I'm way not in it. Amen. I'm way not in it. Amen. God hear me, I'm way not in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He came up in the power of the Spirit to his ministry. By the Spirit, he cast out demons. By the eternal spirit, he offered himself up to God without spot. And in the energy of that same spirit, he was raised from the dead. And today he sits at the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. Whoever liveth, whoever reigneth as our mediator, our intercessor, our advocate, our high priest, our bridegroom king. He came forth out of the grave. According to Romans 8 and 11. If by the spirit of him. That raised up Jesus from the dead. He that raised up Christ from the dead. So also so quicken. Your mortal body by his spirit. That raised up Christ from the dead. Even in death. You are marked by the Spirit. Even when they lower you in the ground. You don't see it. But that grave is marked by the Spirit. How do you know that? Listen. When Jesus comes and he brings the sickle. Which is the quickening of the Spirit. The Spirit. The sickle is going to sweep over the earth, this planet earth, and every, every grave, I don't care how you go, if you died with the spirit, that grave, wherever they put that body, wherever that body disintegrated, that spot is marked by the Holy Ghost. Anybody hearing me here? Oh yes, oh yes. That when God thrust in the sickle, which is the spirit, the quickening, the spin of moment, in the twinkling, the spirit of God will sweep over this earth and this earth and planet. And every grave that is marked by the spirit, the spirit connects with the spirit. Go. 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 Oh, the earth cast out the dead. Next, next grave. Full of artificial flowers and weed on a cross. You might meet five and all of a sudden an empty hole. Casket one way, dirt all over the place. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law that said a soul that sinned shall die. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible said this spirit is given to all who will accept him. Then they too might live and walk and be led.
by the Spirit. I confess to you, I live. I'm where I walk. I'm led by the Spirit. I confess to you, I have no life outside of Christ. I confess to you, I am full of the Spirit. And the seven manifold offices of the Spirit of God is resident in my life. From the Spirit of grace to the Spirit of glory. Somebody said, Praise God. Be not drunk with wine, weary in success, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in spiritual songs and in hymns, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God loved to hear you sing. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord and bless His name. Oh, anybody love to bless Him? I love to bless Him in song. I love to bless Him in word. I love to bless Him in my walk. I love to bless Him in my talk. I love to bless Him in my works. I love to bless Him in the call on my life. I love to bless him in all that I do in all that I say I do it all to the glory of God hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Let me, let me share something that will bless you. When Jesus walked and he lived, he walked in the authority of his Father. If you're going to walk with God, God's given you authority. Do you realize who you are? Do you realize what he's given you? Do you realize what you can possess? Do you realize what is available to you in the Christian faith? I was looking at statistics. 94% of those who profess Christ are living beneath the privilege of their spiritual heritage. 94%. In other words, they're just happy with the free gift. Anybody like free stuff? You like free stuff? You got no skin in the game? You know? Ah, I'm, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Thank God you're saved. Well, you only have elementary in your life. You just, instead of being outside, you're just inside. You know nothing. Wow. Anybody hear me here? You're not out. You're not out. You come in. You're not even in the inner court. You're not even come behind the veil which is into Christ. Come on, come on. on. You get to start the journey. Paul said, "Leave, leave the elementary aside. Move on. Move on. Thank God for that. But now, time to move on. How, how, how many of you like to have a child?" And the child keep the key the, ch the teacher keep holding back your child in elementary mind the child is 16 he's still in elementary child is 17 what the elementary like what's wrong with this child what's wrong with you son you know you begin to find out but you don't wait till it get that far you get teachers and you go you you move every stone to try to help that child that next year, that child move on. I remember our son Jonathan, he played the fool. He's smart, but he, he played the fool. Wrong company. And he let his grade slip. And because we love him, we had we had to, instead of him taking the he cost us a summer vacation. We had to get a teacher. And he has to go to summer school to help him. Anybody? Because what? We care. 
And the teacher said, if you don't get it together, you're not moving on. You're not moving on. You're going to repeat. And that was a wake-up call for him. And we hammered it into him. But we had to take him, take him, old post office road, education department. Take him every week. Like, you rascal. <laughs> you, you cost me my whole son. What, what's wrong with you? Welcome to raising children. I'm going to smile at me. Talk to me here. Hallelujah. I was a parent three times. I know parenthood. Don't talk to me about parent if you never had kids. And I'm not talking about just one. You're going to have two. But they feed off each other. <sighs> <laughs> Even more, you have three like we did. My son got eight. He's quiet. He even wrote a book on it. He got a book. Bestseller. Raising Parents. <laughs> Raising, I'm going to bring the book to you. Raising Parents. He's in the man for speaking on parenthood. I said, that's not your call. <laughs> Stay in the pulpit. <laughs> Hallelujah. His authority and his guide in life was always by the Holy Scriptures. He walked in the Word, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He applied the word to his walk, to his life. It was written in the law how to read it thou. When tempted by the devil three things, three times he said, it is written, it is written. It is. You can't rebuke the devil with the word if you don't know the word. Study to show yourself approved to God. A workman need not be ashamed rightfully. Dividing the word of truth. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. Amen. It's an old saying. He, pract he practiced what he preached. He practiced what he prayed. He tells us that men ought to always pray. Men always should be walking in the word. Not only in the word but in prayer, walking with God. Not only he walked in the word, the word was his life. The word, he spoke nothing but the word. But he had a prayer life. He had a prayer life. And you see him going up into the mountains, leaving the disciples Oh, he prayed. He prayed. He loved. Well, what is prayer? Communion with God. Talking with God. I talk with God all day. I talk with God with my wife on the couch. Pray for you. Pray for the service. Pray for you before you got here. Prayed for me. Prayed. Prayed, Lord, uh, ask God to cover the car. I, 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 everything, everything. You know, hello. Amen. He said, what? If you don't do it. I just had two in this church. Leaving the church. I almost got themselves killed. Sister Carol and Sister Vaughn said, do that. Talk to me here. Amen. Cover yourself. I'm going to church. Cover yourself. Amen. Lord, protect this. Protect it. Cover it. Cover me. Lord, I go in your covering. Sam, say it. Declare it. Lord, I go in your covering. The devil hears it, you know. Huh? Uh, I can't touch him because now he's asked for God's covering. God said, angel, goodness and mercy go with him. Goodness and mercy go with her. Cover that car. Let that wicked one, don't touch it. Protect it. Shield. Oh, yeah. Oh, my blessed God. I had some close ones, like I should be dead. Like I'm, I'm driving, I'm doing all, I'm all good and serving the Lord and worshiping the Lord and all of a sudden this bat out of hell 
like wow, like zoom, zoom, zoom. I mean, almost like what? Just almost well, the car even shook, like shoo. like what? If I just weave it, it but I would have been in like wow, yeah. wow. You cover yourself. Yeah. Don't leave your cover yourself in your home. You could get killed in your own home. Talk to me here. Cover yourself. Amen. Oh, walk in his covering. God, you're my covering. Hallelujah. He's a shield around about you. Above you, he's your rear guard. He's your underneath cushion. He's before you. He's all over you. I'm tied up, tangled up, wrapped up in him. Hallelujah. I have no life but him. Hallelujah. He is my God, my Father, my Savior, Redeemer. He is my advocate my my forgiver my redemption my justification my sanctification he is my holiness uh, oh he's my dance he's my glory he's the lifter up of my head he is my everything and without him I can do nothing the Bible said Jesus being in fashion as a man he humbled himself. He walked in humility. He walked in prayer. He walked with the word applied to his feet, to his heart. There were three parables on prayer. The Pharisees, the publican, the friend at midnight and the widow, and the unjust judge. He went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Luke 6, 12. He agonized in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. He died praying. Can I tell you? I said he died praying. The thief on the cross heard him praying. And it was through him, his prayer, that convicted him and caused him to say, remember me. I'm, I'm leaving this worthy realm. Uh, there's just something different about you. I hear this crazy fool that's yelling, if you be the son of God, come down and save yourself and save us. But, but you, I, I hear you. you you're you different. I, I believe you. I don't know you, but I believe you. And he said, remember me. And Jesus, he just said, today shall thou be with me in paradise. Oh, the first sinner to go to be with Jesus in paradise in the heavens. Anybody hear me here? Wow. From the New Testament age. The others were Old Testament. Wow. Isn't that amazing? He went with Christ. That's when God locked up paradise in there and moved paradise in the heavenlies. In Mount Zion. Somebody say amen. Paradise. Where Paul was caught up in the third heaven into paradise. Huh? Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. He went to be with Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. David said evening and morning at noon will I pray. I'll cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Psalm 57, 17. Matthew 21, 22, Mark 11, 24. Talk about how David was a praying man. In closing, not only Jesus was a praying man, but Jesus was filled with joy. Don't ever let the devil rob you of your joy. The thief coming not before to steal to kill, to destroy. He loved to take your joy. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy. His joy in life was to do the will of God. His joy in life was to do the will of his Father. Although he was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, he had a joy always before his eyes. Oh, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and today is set down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. The joy he always had, and no matter what he went through, the joy was always permanent and dark in his life we 
we go through ups and downs, in and out, in and out, and struggles. But never lose your joy. Never lose your joy. I think of Paul, Paul and Silas when they were beaten and put in stocks and in the dungeon. They never left. They never lost their joy. They never lost their song. They begin to sing. They begin to worship. And God said the heavens heard it. God heard it. The angels heard it. And God dispatched an angel. He said go down there and set my captives free. And the angel of the Lord went and loose opened the doors. And they were pro oh my God. They were set free even though they were singing at midnight. Not only the jailers heard it. Not only the prisoners heard it. But all heaven heard it. The angels heard it heard it, the Father heard it, all the hosts of heaven were moved with the singing and the joy and the song of the Lord in their lives. He only rejoiced in the will of his Father. He said, I delight to do thy will, oh my God. And then in Luke, that's in Psalm 48. And then in Luke 20, 21, the Bible said he rejoiced in the Spirit of God. He rejoiced in the Spirit of God. Like Mary, my soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit doth rejoice in God, my Savior. I'm through preaching. I'm not finished. But I would, if I would bring a close to this, Jesus lived a triumphant life. Even in death, he was triumphant. The Bible said, had the dark world had known what they were doing, they would not have crucified the son of God even in his death the world thought they won the devil thought they won but when he said the work that I came to do I've done it and he said it is finished and he came down on the head of the snake the serpent and crushed it when he crushed his head like a ton of bricks, like a boulder. The Bible said, then he willingly released his spirit. Because it was over. It was over. Victory. No man taketh my life from me. I freely give it. I freely lay it down. I've got power to lay it down. And I've got power to take it up again. And he laid it down. And he took it up. That Sunday morn. That Sabbath. And he said, tell, tell. Said the body, come on, we're getting out of here. And he entered the body. Once more. And when he entered the body, the body changed. From mortal to immortality. From corruptible to incorruption. And he made the bed. And he said, all right, let's get out of here. Never again to lay in the bed of death. Never again. I said, did you? You knew what that meant. Never again. Never again. Never again. He died once. The Bible said he died once and for all. Somebody say amen. Jesus triumphant. Hallelujah. His walk. His words. His faith. His life. His love. His suffering, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, his return. He is triumphant, overcomer, the great I am, the king eternal, the omnipotent God, the resurrected Savior. Because he lives, we shall live also. Stand on your feet, lift your head, lift your heart, lift your 
faith. Hallelujah. 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 Love with him right now. I love you, Daddy. Abba, Father. I love you. I thank you, Jesus. Help me to walk like you walk. I want to walk with my Father. I want to walk with Christ. I want to walk with my God. I want to walk with you. Hand in hand, heart in heart. Step in step with Christ. I want to walk with my God. I want to walk with my Father. I want to walk with the Lord. I'm going to walk with you, Lord. Help me, Lord, never to get out of step with you. Help me never to get ahead of you. Help me never to lie behind. But help me to walk with you. The Bible said when Jesus rose again, he walked with the man on the road of Emmaus. And he began to tell them about himself even though he did not profess that he was who he was to them. And he began from Moses to the resurrection. And he left them with a testimony. He said, did not our hearts burn within us as he opened to us the scripture, the rhema word. He opened the logos, written word. Say logos. Logos. He opened this. Paul says this is, the logos is the more perfect way for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Somebody say amen. And he opened to them. And because he opened the scriptures, they got a holy heartburn. Oh, that tongues could not clear. Oh, Alka-Salsa couldn't take care of. Oh, no acid. No acid formula couldn't take care of it. It was a spiritual heartburn. It was not a natural heartburn. It was a spiritual heartburn. Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked with us along the way? I want you to leave your seat and run down here with me in closing as we as we come to the altar of God, as we come into the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I enjoy preaching this word this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we love you. Now lift your hand, lift your heart to him. Now yield to him, Father. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. All that I am, I'm yours. My heart, my soul, my mind, my spirit, my thoughts, my body, I'm yours. All yours. All yours. I hold on to nothing in this earthly realm. It is all yours. I came with nothing. One day I'll leave with nothing. Oh God, I'm yours. I'm yours. Come upon me, Lord. Consume me, Father. Lead me, guide me, direct me. Lay your hand upon my heart. Oh, Father, you know the life you prepared for me. You know my journey. You know my destiny. You know the call on my life. Lord, I ask that you would fulfill your good work, your good will, your good purpose and good pleasure in my heart, in my life. Be glorified in me and through me that I may bring you glory, that I may bring you praise. I give myself to you today, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable worship, my reasonable service. I'm yours. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you for the call on my heart. Thank you for your touch in my life. 
Thank you for this beautiful message this morning. Oh God, let it take root in my heart. Let it take root in my spirit. That it may bring forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit. Oh God, that I may grow up into you. A tree of righteousness by the planning of the Lord. That you might be glorified in me and through me. That I may bring forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit for your kingdom, for your glory. Your namesake. Your praise. In Jesus' name. I'm going to come to you and I'm going to lay my hands on you and I'm just going to bless you. And I want you to be open to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm open to you for that which you want to impart in my life this morning. I receive by faith. grace to the hearers. These lips take away the leprosy. Sanctify my lips. Let me speak life and not death. Let me speak hope and faith and not condemnation and cursing myself. Let me speak life. God said speak life that you and your seed might live. Lord in your name Jesus. In your name Jesus. In your name Jesus. And everything I touch lives. Live. Live. Then I see the fruit of it. Come on, church. I see the fruit of it. I see the evidence of it. Because it lives. Hallelujah. My work, my labor, my faith, my words, my effort, everything I speak, everything I touch. Oh, God. I, it speak life into it. God said, speak life that you and your seed might live. Jesus. 